Hi, everyone. Jeff Cote here with BoatingTechTalk.com. Uh, we've got a question here from a fellow boater. Uh, Paul asks, Jeff, I've got a charge controller that's rated for a max output of 60 amps. Does that mean that it limits the solar cells that I can install? Short answer is absolutely and yes. When you size a controller, uh, one thing you have to do, first of all, is ask yourself, what voltage? And I've done that error, by the way. Not all bolts are 12 volts. Some of us have 24 volt bolts. So if you've got a 24 volt bolt or a 48 volt boat DC, you need to buy a solar controller that matches your battery bank voltage. So if you've got 12 volt, 12 volt controller and on and on. So that's the first step. Next actually is going to be uh, in the data sheet is going to be the max rated amperage that can go through that controller. Some controllers are also going to say the max wattage. They are related, um, but certainly amperage gives you a good clue. So in this instance, Paul says, Jeff, I have a 280 watt solar array. So a 280 watt solar array, practically speaking, is probably going to give at max in terms of maybe output, I would say 20 would be a lot. That would be a phenomenal output out of that array. It's most likely going to be between 10 and 15. So yeah, the good news is Paul's controller at 60 amps can handle no problem a 280 amp uh, or 280 watt uh, solar array. But don't think that all solar controls can handle all solar arrays. Absolutely not. Most controllers are rated either 10 or 15 amps, right? So that's a fraction. That's a quarter of what Paul has on his boat. So when we match controllers to solar panels, either a solar panel to a controller or multiple solar panels to a controller, and it doesn't matter if it's wired in parallel or it's in wired in series, that solar array is still going to have an aggregate output of amperage. And as a rule of thumb, you could say that a 100-watt solar panel is going to output about five, six amps at the most, most times. You could have amazing output when the solar panels and the sun are directly above. There's no shading. Everything is perfect. You might see a little bit more than that, but, you know, about five to six amps is what you're realistically going to get. And you might peak a little higher, uh, but you're not going to get, you know, 10 amps out of a 100-watt panel. So what you end up doing is you look at the data sheet from the solar controller manufacturer and you make sure that the max output of your solar array in terms of wattage and also amperage will not exceed the inputs that can come in to your solar controller. And the other thing to remember is if you come with a high input voltage, your input current might be lower, obviously, because in series, the voltage is add, but the current stays the same. But that's all going to get translated or i.e. converted to your battery voltage. So you could have a solar array that's at, let's say, 50, 48 volts, 50 volts. And the current is, I don't know, 10 amps. But if your battery bank is at 24, well, that conversion is going to make it 20 amps at 24. So you always got to think about not just the input voltage and input current, but what is the max current that's going to happen on the controller, either at the input or at the output? And you worry about that, and that's how you end up sizing a controller. And also being realistic to not keep on adding solar panels to only one controller, assuming or hoping that that solar controller can handle anything you throw at it. Because assumptions on a boat rarely pan out for anyone. So not worth it. So yeah, size your controller based on battery voltage, solar wattage, and total amps going out of the controller. You take that all into consideration, and those are generally the main requirements for sizing a controller. By the way, if you're curious about more solar controllers, we've got tons of articles, including I've done some deep, like, like quite a lot of time just talking about solar controllers, and there's a bunch of presentations just on that very topic. So if you want to geek out, well, just go in YouTube and search for some topics from PYS or go on our website, and you'll find a lot more about selecting and choosing a solar controller for your solar rate. Thanks for everyone for watching and uh, please submit your questions so we can geek out further. So if you're curious again, go on our website and find out more answers and solutions with this sort of setup.
And thanks for asking. And thanks for all of you for listening and tuning in.